All right. We are we are live. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to go live with you. I am joined by the amazing and powerful Gordana Birnett. And we are we're excited to go live today. How are you? Oh, hi, Lucas. I am so excited to be here. This is awesome. I love it that we can meet this way and that we can speak to an audience out there. Oh, I'm feeling chills in my body. <laughs> it's such a high energy here. I love doing this. It's so great. There, uh, there's so much going on right now, already kicking off the new year and energies and timelines and frequencies. People are, people are really looking for how to get settled in moving forward, how to find peace. And I know everyone does not want to repeat a 2020 and uh energetically like how how have you what's been the process for you to find peace and to stay present in the now moment and just mm. just be in the flow yes oh, absolutely i mean it's been a very very um illuminating experience the entire 2020 has been an illuminating experience for me even though I mean, it was a year that everyone wants to forget, but at the same time, there were golden nuggets in this year uh, where I feel that I have connected closer to who I truly am, not because I chose, but because I had to. There was no other way of going through certain things in, 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 in time and space. So I feel like I've been forced to do what I can with what I have, where I am. I can't, I can't find distractions anymore. I mean, I can't travel anywhere, so I have to stay where I am. Uh, I, I can't go out the same way as I used to, so I have to, I have to deal with whatever it is that's bugging me in the now moment. It has pushed me very, very strongly into the now moment, which means that that is where everything actually is happening. And that's where all the choices are made. And that's where I am. Otherwise I'm always in the future or somewhere in the past. I'm never in the now moment because there's so many distractions. So I feel like 2020 has pushed me into being in the now moment. Mm. And that isn't always pleasant. So you have to learn how to deal with the unpleasant stuff too. So I feel that it has been highly illuminating this 2020 year that we all want to forget how about you you know it's been it's interesting where i've been thinking a lot about the word tension and usually mm -hmm. tension is where people want to avoid and and flee from but the tension really is in the now moment and if we can get under the tension and not try to run away from but really sit and ground ourselves and i've been doing a i've been doing breath work and that has mm. been tremendous to just come back into this now moment to come back into my body to not give my power away to another force another idea another entity another power structure mm. but to realize that oh, in this moment right here, right now, I am in me, I am safe. And that has been a huge um, tool. It's been a huge blessing because usually mm -hmm. the tension, I wanted to numb the tension or I wanted to avoid the tension or I wanted to escape, yeah. escape the tension. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, I find yeah. that tension, if I have tension, I also realize I, I get to ground more in the now moment. And, and mm -hmm. in that place, I feel that is freedom. I feel like the now moment is freedom. We are free now. It's not some future tense thing. I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to get free. I, I already am free. My soul is free now, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. This is to realize the truth of who you are. I mean, we are all this stillness, exploring the movement on the outside. What is identical in each and every one of us is the stillness, the, the one observing 
the movement and the tension on the outside. So when you connect to that, you connect to who you truly are. And you also realize that who you truly are is indestructible. It cannot be touched by anything. So the question is then, why am I experiencing tension? Because in the stillness, it would be boring to always be in the stillness. We are here to play with that tension. We are not here to fight it or to run away from it. We are here to explore it and see why am I experiencing tension? What have I forgotten here? What am I here to learn? And when you ask yourself, what is this tension teaching me in this moment? That is when you go through the tension and release it. When you ask the question, what, what am I here to learn? Also, I see all these negative feelings and I put quotation mark around negative because it's not always about negative. If there is tension, then the tension is a signal that your higher self is giving you, telling you that you need to relax. Mm. It doesn't say run away, feel more fear, stay here and feel anxiety. It says, you need to relax. So the question is, why am I not relaxed? Well, there is a belief system which is stopping you from relaxing. And the belief system does not have to be true. It might be habitual, something that you brought with you from your childhood or something that you're anticipating from the future. But it's not true in the now moment. So you have to stop and ask, what is it that I believe that is creating this tension and how do I release it? What do I need to learn from it? It's always about the learning. It's always about the learning. I, I've realized that I need to learn stuff and that's how I let go of them. It's a beautiful way to, to look at look at all that too, because it takes a humility to acknowledge yeah. that we have more to learn. It takes a humility to come back into that place of, everything's happening for me. It's not happening to me. And that has been a huge, you know, I grew up in Christianity with the verse Romans 8, 28 it says, and then we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. But while I was in massive trauma and pain and didn't know how to heal what was inside, and I kept trying to find forms and functions and people and groups and ideas outside myself to heal myself. It wasn't until I realized, and I, and I found just to insert one more thing to that. I found that verse very offensive for someone who's been abused. Like I was to hear all things work together for good. I'm like, what? It's just, it's wow. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. But then mm -hmm. when I went through the healing and really acknowledged and, and faced all the pain and, and, spoke the truth of all the things that happened to me it was incredible release but i also realized that everything happens for me it doesn't happen to me and i am who i am today because i've gone through what i've gone through and it mm -hmm. took humility to say oh i have more to learn about why i'm here about my experience and you helped me with that asking <laughs> you know what um my soul's purpose here and my the soul contracts and understanding the soul's journey in this time space continuum that we find ourselves in, mm -hmm. in these bodies with all these experiences. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really beautiful to see life circumstances, events as things happening for me that I have more to learn. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it does happen for you because you have to ask yourself, do I believe in a beneficial universe or a malevolent universe? Mm. If it doesn't, it's to me, it is illogical to think that the universe wants something bad for you. It, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to exist in such a universe. It has to be at least neutral or work for you, be beneficial. Your job is to find the benefits in it. It might look like not being not beneficial for you, but your job is to find the benefits. And the benefits is always there when you ask yourself, what can I learn about myself here? It's not about allowing people to use you as an emotional trash bin or abuse you or whatever they do. It's not about that. It is about learning 
who you are in every now moment. Mm. And the more adversities, the stronger you actually are. Mm. That's, that's the, the lesson to learn. I, I, through my own childhood, I realized that I had adversities in my life or obstacles in my childhood, which I felt were unfair and so hard to go through. And I felt like a victim for a very long time. I felt like a victim because I thought that life isn't fair to me. There's something wrong. Life isn't fair to me. And that's when you think that you know everything, you know that you're a victim and life isn't fair to you. And then you realize, I don't know anything about this reality. Mm -hmm. How can I find the gold in this? There has to be a benefit here because the universe is not working through you. You're not born under an un un unlucky star. Actually, I go as far as saying it doesn't just work for me. It literally works through me, hmm. which means that it loves me unconditionally and it loves everyone else in this reality unconditionally, which means that it won't put any conditions on you. It will give you exactly or it will match your frequency exactly for you. You have free will and it allows you to choose whatever you want to explore in this reality. As a child, you do not have that choice because as a child, you are prepared for the rest of your life and the things that you need to work on, the purpose in your life, you're prepared as a child. Some children like you and I had a rough childhood because we were prepared to do something here. And if I'm if I do not see that I was prepared by this, that there is benefit in this, I stay in the state of victimhood. And that is not, the universe will work through me. It will give me more opportunities to feel like a victim because that is my frequency and it works through me. It's like God experiences this reality through me. He or she or it cannot make stuff for me. I need to make the stuff, but God works through me, the universe works through me, through my frequency, because my frequency says exactly what it is I want to explore and experience, consciously or unconsciously. That's the second thing to think about. So I, I do get that it works for you, never against you. And you have to find why do I see it as if it worked against me? Mm. It's a big difference between seeing the universe or the source or god or quantum field as something that is not nice to you yeah. and knowing that it works for you always and forever it's so <laughs> it is so beautiful that i mean first of all just to see life like that to see god mm. like that to see us like that is such a liberating worldview because there's so much more. When does it ever stop? When can we, I, one of the things that radically changed for me in 2020 was understanding that we are receivers, like, like a radio. We are a radio, the physical structure of the radio, not the actual stations. We are the receiver and these fingers are antennas as our toes are antennas. So we receive from the ground, we can get grounded. And we, it's so important. I've been going barefoot for, I've really gone a little hippie <laughs> since 2020 by just to put yeah. my feet on the ground and literally ground mm. the energy back into the earth and receive from the earth, just like a tree mm. is planted by the rivers of water. It says in Psalm one, just to ground and receive everything from the earth that is good. Mm. But also what do we do with our fingers? And look what society has taught us with our fingers, the middle finger frequency. Mm. Uh, number mm. one, we're taught all these different frequencies mm. to receive creates this energy. So mm. what I've, what I've come to really understand is the highest frequency is unconditional love. And we can walk in that unconditional love. We can walk in the presence mm. of God. We can bathe in the presence of, of love and light. And we can share our experience mm -hmm. of walking in that love and light with every single person we come in contact with if we are tuned into that frequency if we're in the now moment mm -hmm. 
man, oh, this is, I mean, beautiful. Okay, someone may have caused an offense to me. Someone might have said something to me. Someone could have done something to me. And I come back into myself and say, hmm, why did that come? Why did I attract that? What is for me to learn? It may be to put a boundary. It may be <laughs> to separate, but it's always comes back to me. And I have the power to adjust the dial of my radio to change the mm. frequency of what I'm receiving. And one of the things that um, I also came to realize, <laughs> hey, James, I see you on there, brother. Um, uh, one of the things that I came to realize this year with our hands and frequency and radio and antenna is it says in the Bible to lay hands on no man mm. suddenly lest you become a partaker of their sin. And I've always thought, what does that mean? And I've started to understand that energy is transferred from touch because our hands are antennas. Mm. But sin was always the misnomer. I'm like, sin, what does that mean? Like this acting. But now I understand that sin is an archer's, it's a, it's a term from archery when the archer pulled back to draw the arrow to hit the target, mm. sin just mm. meant missing the mark. Yes. So then I realized, what is the mark? It's the walk in love. It's the walk in light. It's to stay in the now moment. It's the walk and be in this place of everything is happening through me, like you said, mm -hmm. which is so beautiful. So then I realized, if these are receivers, mm. I don't want to tune into a frequency that is not the highest vibrational frequency. Mm. And when we stay in that high vibrational frequency of love and light, we invite other people to join us mm. versus us tuning into their frequency. So that's mm. been one of the things that I've learned from the now moment and um, mm. in 2020. Yeah. Lesson amazing yes exactly i mean the tuning into other people's frequency well the way i see it you're you cannot run away from yourself i mean i could go to australia and think that i might feel better over there but i am me everywhere i cannot run away from myself which means what is it that i cannot run away from well i cannot run away from the information field that is me I am the stillness creating a field of information which you decode as Gordana sitting there in front of you as a woman, as a speaker, as a writer, whatever it is that I'm showing you, whatever information that I want you to receive, you will receive because I am an information field and so are you. Everything is made of energy. So what differentiates me from you is the frequency, meaning the information that I'm sending out. So. If I take that atmosphere, so to speak, with me, which I do wherever I go, if I am not in tune with my highest self, and for you, you said that uh, unconditional love is the highest frequency, I think that compassion and understanding is the highest frequency. Mm. Understanding to me means to stand under my highest self mm. and understand other people. Unconditional love can be a tricky one because how do you love someone who is hurting you? But if you can go as far as understanding what they're doing, you don't need to love them or hate them. You're neutral, but you understand what they're doing. That I think is a more conscious frequency where you can find more truth in it because you understand what they're doing, but you don't need to love it. We have a very complicated um, relationship to love human beings have a complicated relationship to love because we as the word god so does the word love mean right, so right. many things yes, to so yes. many people yes, and totally. for me it took it took years to get this when when i started on my own spiritual journey i was thinking how do i love everyone i mean why do i have to love everyone how do you do that how do i love myself how do i give myself unconditional love unconditional love that's a tough thing but if i say 
I understand what this person is doing. I don't need to accept what he or she is doing, but I understand what they're doing, which means that their actions will not trigger a frequency within me. Mm. For me, when I feel that someone is triggering a frequency within me, I know that I, the one, the highest self of me, I fall asleep to that frequency and I wake up to the frequency of my ego, which mm. means that I feel like I need to defend myself or to judge someone. And it becomes really sticky because I lower my frequency to their frequency and I I kind of hook into their frequency and then I find myself creating a reality that I don't want because the universe answers my frequency. And yeah. if I'm tapped into someone else's frequency, well, I'm creating a jungle in my own reality because I won't know where I am. Right. So just being more aware and that 2020 has done that for me, becoming very, very aware of if I am here or if my ego is driving. And I know when my, my ego awakens, I can hear it, I can feel it in my body that my ego has awakened right now. And I either need to say, go back to sleep or what do you want? <laughs> but it's still me talking. I mean, the I am talking to my ego. And that's, I think 2020 has been masterclass in that for me, yeah. serious masterclass in, in finding or being very much aware of my ego. Hmm. That's do you beautiful. feel when your ego awakens how does it feel when your ego awakens yeah i i do feel it one of the things talking about ego before i answer because that's a the great mm -hmm. question one of the things that you mm -hmm. helped me understand so when i went through this emotional intelligence program back in 2018 and mm -hmm. it saved my life i radically had a born again experience at this environment that just showed me unconditional love because no one judged me and they said say whatever you want to say mm -hmm. and we'll cry with you as long as you need to cry and mm -hmm. we'll stand with you as as long as you need to stand and um, it allowed me to express things that I couldn't get out prior mm -hmm. but there was a lot of narrative in that in that world of ego death and ego is the enemy and and all this but what I've learned and what mm -hmm. you know you and I and our conversations and and working with you so our ego is a, is the greatest gift. It's such a beautiful yeah. gift. It, I mean, we love our ego. It's that we don't need our ego all the time. And that's the difference where you said, oh, ego, go back to sleep. You can go back to mm -hmm. sleep now. Thank you. Versus this self-hatred, really hating mm -hmm. the ego becomes self-hatred packaged in a different way. And that's what I learned mm -hmm. when I'd grown up in, in religion it's like i hate the you the term is the flesh you hate the flesh you hate the ego you hate mm -hmm. well i was just living in self-hatred versus loving myself and saying oh my ego is protecting my innocence my ego is protecting the little child that i once was that was like are they going to hurt you again and i think the fallacy mm -hmm. is that people who have yet to uncouple when they're still asleep and they're not fully conscious they've yet to uncouple that their ego is a tool of them. Their yes, ego absolutely. is not them. Yeah. And that's one yes, of the things that's absolutely. been a huge lesson. Yeah. But when I feel my yeah. ego pop up, my default was always being unsafe. I mean, that's how I grew mm -hmm. up. It's just, it's unsafe. It's unsafe anywhere I go. So when I feel, if I watch, if I hear a headline or I see the news or I see something happen. My default is my ego says, oh, you're unsafe. You have to, you have to do something mm -hmm. right now. And that's why breathing has been so important to come back and okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm safe. Yes. Yeah. I'm capable. I'm mm -hmm. intelligent. I am strong. I am big. <laughs> I am here. I am okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I write that in my book that ego is not a bad thing. Ego becomes bad when you forget who you truly are and that ego is a tool that you're using here. Your emotions are also tools that you're using here. Your thoughts are not you. You're the one thinking them. Your body isn't you. You're the one using it. So just knowing that 
you're the one using all these things to explore a physical reality of polarity here where you have a choice. I mean, a tree does not have a choice in the same way as a human being has a choice. And that makes it tricky for you because you have to know, am I choosing out of fear or out of love? Is the ego awakened or am I choosing from my highest self? And that is that happens in every single now moment. So we do this as long as we breathe, we will have choices and the ego will take every opportunity to wake up and to do the things for you here. I go as far as writing uh, about ego as a container of all our desires, because if I wouldn't have an ego, I would be one with everything. I would love everybody and I will be one with everything. And that's a beautiful thing. But at the same time, I have no experiences then. I'm just experiencing unconditional love. And I think that our spirit, when we, before we enter this physical reality, that is the realm where we are. Everything is fine. Everything is cool. And we might want to have some excitement. And that is why we choose to enter or incarnate, spirit incarnated into a physical body where we explore the physical reality and choices. So if you want to have choices, you have to have darkness and you have to have light. And ego contains all the desires and passions and needs and wants that you have in this reality. So if the stillness is identical in each and every one of us, because that is the source, then ego will contain what differs us, our desires. You have a certain set of desires and passions and wants and needs in your, your body, and I have different desires passions and needs in my body and that makes us different because and that is why my purpose is is different from your purpose but the the purpose on a grand scale is to explore how it feels not to be whole perfect and to remember how it feels to be whole and perfect. It's a game, we're playing a game here. We're actually playing the game of dying gods and goddesses because who we truly are cannot die. So we are in a sense, God incarnated in a physical body, which will die. And it's the time limit that makes this so exciting here, that that heightens everything here. That is why we are here. We're actually here to feel how it feels to die because we don't know that. We can only know that here on earth. So while we are here, time becomes a tool, but also something we need to remember all the time. Why are we wasting our time sitting in something that is an illusion like fear and other things that are negative when we can always pull back, breathe in and say, I am here and say, good night, ego, sleep for a while. I need to stay in my truth here. So and, and I mean, yes, and, and when, we, when we know this, this is what I do. I do this all the time. And that's why I say I want people to remember who they truly are. Because when they do that, when I know who I truly am, the stillness, observing physical reality, I also know who you are and everyone else on the deepest level of who we are. And then we ha- have our opinions, desires, thoughts, emotions, that differ us Mm. but we're still one in the same consciousness exploring this reality through you and me and everyone else and that's the beauty of it that is why it is such a beautiful co-creation it's beautiful and it's also part of the co-creation is not holding on tightly to what was and i think that's what also um we're entering is it's not just because we experienced or explored or created something in a time doesn't mean that's what we are. It doesn't mean that's what we shall do forever. And people Mm -hmm. that I think, and this is the difference between 3D density and the 5D density is that Mm -hmm. people who are trying to hold tightly onto what they built in 3D while the shift is pulling everyone, like everyone's like, what is happening? Where are we going? What's the future hold? Is it going to be tyranny and a 1984 experience? Is it going to be bliss on earth and a heaven on earth experience? Like, where are we going? Mm -hmm. When we decouple from what we experienced in that now moment, 
we are then mm -hmm. free to choose something completely new in this now moment. So it's not that you're an author and speaker, it's that you chose in now moments to speak and to write and you can again. Yes. And so can yeah. someone else. And same with me. I'm, it's just fascinating, I think, for people to awaken to say, well, what else do I want to choose in this now moment? I'm no longer mm -hmm. a journalist or uh, this career title. I'm. That's mm -hmm. what the 3D world was. Well, what do you do? Oh, mm -hmm. I am a, and then fill in the mm -hmm. blank. Yeah. But when it's we always, awaken, yeah. You, I am a chooser of all things. I am a, I am an experiential being who gets to play with titles and experiences and people and forms and functions. And my income is not based on the what my base, my income is based on that. I am now here receiving all the highest good, all the highest blessing, all the highest light so that I can be an invitation for others to do the same for them do the same yeah. Yeah. yeah you know you know something i wanted we were going to start this facebook thing with reading from my book random numbers because synchronicity i mean you love synchronicity love and so it. do i i believe i know that synchronicity is the glue that holds everything together and this is how the universe actually is creating it and i was thinking of a number before we started and i thought number 133 that's the one i'm going to read mm. and I need to open it up because I think it's very, very, very closely connected to what you just talked about. Let me just find it here in my book. Let's see, where is it? Uh, here it is. Now and the illusion of time is the, the, the headline from it. Here it goes, 133, it says, this is such synchronicity in this. The past gives you an illusion of identity. Seemingly solid, it predicts a future you, but the real you can only exist in the now. And then the next truth thought says, spend less time in I was and I will be. The only place where you can make a change is in the I am. So I mean, Jules, it fits so know. well with what you said. Yes, yes. It, it is true. We we base our identity on what we have done in our reality but if we only chose the good stuff we would feel great in the now moment what we do is we take everything that is in our past and we put it in our backpack and then we walk with those bricks never ever opening the backpack looking in and saying do i really need this brick oh wait it's gold i can use it <laughs> We never do that. What we do is we carry it and we get more and more tired in the now moment. And then we start anticipating the future because we know by experience that life won't get easier because we're carrying this backpack. And in a way, we never move away from the future. We stay in the status quo of misery in the future, in the now moment. And I think that what you're saying is to acknowledge that you are actually spirit incarnated in this physical world with a choice yes. here either you walk in the middle or you choose that or that it's up to you you choose every single time yes. and if your choices are always based on what you have in your backpack well then you will be living in the past forever or if your choices are always anticipation of the future in fear you'll be living in anxiety all the time. And that is, I think most of us are there because we are not saying, oh, wait, I am here. Mm. I usually do this in the mornings when I wake up because I feel like there's a pressure from the outside world right now where there is a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety going on. And since we are co-creating this reality, we tap into it before yeah. we awaken. Our, awa our awareness is out there and we tap into it. And then when I open my eyes, I'm in the middle of a thought. And I'm going, who is doing the thinking? I just woke up. What's happening here? And I can feel the fear. I can feel the, the, the anxiety out there. I need to say, stop. No, this is not what I want right now. What do I want? And then I go, okay, so I am here right now. I am here. And then I can choose what I want. Sometimes I'll choose the fear because that's what I need that day. And sometimes I say, nope, not today. This is what I'm going to do instead. Most days I say, nope, not today. Because why would I? 
that there are fears and that there are negative things that we need to go through. We can't close our eyes and say, I don't want that. But then there is fear that actually isn't real, that you don't need in your reality. And you need to discern what fear is fear where I can learn something about myself and what fear is something that I can discard and say this I don't need in my life mm. it doesn't affect me actually Beautiful. it's an yeah it's a it's a it's a way of living actually to know that you can choose in, in every single now moment what it is you want to explore it's not I don't feel like that is a privilege I feel like it is knowledge to know that you are actually choosing in every now moment that gives you great power nice. to stay in this beautiful place where you can feel peace at any time, wherever you are. Yes. You know, it's, it, I, for those listening and, and thank you everyone for listening this morning, I mm -hmm. want to share just um, my journey of understanding choice from a very from a higher perspective than just our consciousness in the body. So when I was studying with my rabbi friend for three years, we'd study every week. And in Judaism, they talk about the three states of the soul, the soul before the body, the soul in the body and the soul after the body. And that was the first concept that they talk about. There are three functions of awareness of the soul. The soul knows who it is prior to incarnating the soul knows who it is in incarnating the soul knows who it is after it incarnated and also knows love in the relation to god and, and love and all that and then i went to that emotional intelligence program and and through my life and all the trauma that i experienced all the healing that i went through the gal grabbed my head and i've shared this before with you the gal grabbed my head and she brought my head close and she said to me and no one talked about God this whole time. There was no spiritual component of this per se, but it was <laughs> very spiritual as well. Um, but she said, God asked your soul, would you do anything for me? And your soul said, yes. So he sent you into that family. He sent you into that home to experience everything you experienced. So you could relate to every single person that you come in contact with. I'm just sobbing because I have always loved God with like every fiber of my being like i have this i just like this voracious love of god i do i love god and when she said that and then i looked at all i had just healed all this pain and trauma i had just gone through all this stuff that i was working on and how horrible and, and violating and terrible it was but then from that perspective of wow i chose to know the depths of pain so that I could walk with others in the depth or the heights of healing, I guess, if you could say that. And then when we uh, started working together, and when I first mm -hmm. talked to you and you talked about soul contracts, my mind was blown because it wasn't just, mm -hmm. so first I understood the soul had different states of time. Yes. Then I mm -hmm. understood that my soul agreed and chose to do what it was supposed to do. Then you helped me understand that not just my soul in relationship to God, but my soul in relationship to others, that we make soul contracts to all come down. And that has been, that lesson continually comes up for me in different meditation journeys and different things that I've done that we see not just our path, but we see everyone that we will encounter and we still jump in, which means mm -hmm. we're never victim. We're always Never. have the opportunity to choose choice mm -hmm. is our gift of even before the body, we still ch get choice. We still get the law mm -hmm. of free will and that mm -hmm. there is no victimhood in choice. If I chose Never. this, it means I am learning something from this to share with others. And it, when we forget that we are learning lessons to share our treasure our gifts the what's in the backpack if we're victim we just keep it on like, this life's hard and things keep happening instead of like well, what is in this backpack gold yes brick yes. sand rocks like anyway it's just been an incredible mm -hmm. um to to affirm what you're saying about choice our soul mm -hmm. has choice we could leave this body right now we could leave the earth mm -hmm we would miss the greatest opportunity to share 
us yeah. to share our perspective, to share our beauty, to share our joys and pains and, and trials and so that we can share the knowledge that we've carried with us mm. for others. Yeah. And I just find it so beautiful. I just find it so beautiful. Mm. I, I, I think that, yeah, we talked about the soul contracts and it took me a long time to realize that there is more to this than just, you know, um, it's, it's very tough to think about that you would choose something like that. I mean, I had a hard time believing that I chose my parents. And then I had my own son when I was 31. <laughs> and I think he was about three or four years old when he said, you know, mom, before I was born, I was sitting in the clouds and I saw you and dad walking on the street. And I said, oh, there they are. And swoosh, in a split second, I was with you. And I was going, what is this child telling me? So I started Googling this and there are lots of children that talk about where they were before they were born. And I was thinking, we are so preoccupied where we're going after death. Why is nobody asking where we were before we were born? I have a child here that talks about this. There's something in this. So I started looking into this and there's a whole lot of information there going on of what we do before we enter this world and why we choose what we choose. I mean, Let's say that I am a soul somewhere and I'm enjoying it. It's beautiful. Everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about. Wouldn't it be, I mean, it, I would choose some kind of adversity just to stir things up so that it might become more, I, I might explore more fun. Mm. So if there, is, if there is an adversity, if there is an obstacle, it's like a rubber band. It pulls you down until you reach a certain frequency which is unbearable and then when you realize what it is and you get you become free from it it shoots you up like a rocket and you feel the joy when you're sh shooting yourself up in this in the sky you cannot feel that joy in spirit you need to feel it here because it is the 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 other side of pain and by the way my son was doing making a joke he uh, he just published a video on his youtube channel jihab and he said, I'm in Spain, but without the S. That means I'm in pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, oh my God, this is what Earth is. It's Spain, but without the S. <laughs> pain. <laughs> but I, it isn't just pain. Pain is one part of it. It's where there is darkness, there has to be an equal amount of light, which means that if I only see darkness, then I'm missing something because the light is always there. It's I, I need to focus my awareness on it. And I need to do that in every now moment. As a child, as I said before, I do not have a choice because it's in the programming, so to speak. The things that I need to explore before I can fulfill my purpose in life. So there, it's like learning how to walk. Some children have a easier childhood, others have a harder ch time during their childhood. But it's kind of a preparation before you enter adulthood and before you start your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And your purpose in life can be highly connected to what happened to you as a child. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today unless I had the childhood that I had. If someone would have said that when I was 14, living at home, I would say, get out of here. I don't want to listen because it's too painful. But when I look back at it, I know exactly why I had the experiences that I had. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today. I wouldn't be able to be the human being that I am today. I wouldn't be able to love unconditionally. I wouldn't know what it is. I wouldn't know what the authentic me is unless I would have had the lessons that I went through. And as you say, it is tough sometimes, but at the same time, there is always a benefit in it. Always. It's like when you open that backpack, which, which I felt, as I said, my entire life, as I had a backpack and everybody else had wings and they could fly. And I walked with those bricks on my back all the time. When you open it and you open it with, um, an objective mind, when you do not allow the feelings from the hurt and the victimhood in the past 
to put filters on you so that you won't be able to see the gold, that you will see bricks even though it is gold. When you put that aside and you look at it from a more calm and secure perspective, knowing that you are indestructible, nothing, who you truly are cannot be hurt by anything. When you open that backpack from that state of mind, you see the gold. If you are not in that state of mind, you will not be able to see the gold and you will still continue to carry the, 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 the bricks there. So how do you get into that state of mind? Well, as you said, by the simple thing you can do is to start breathing, to allow your body to have the oxygen it needs to clear your mind and to slow down your heart rate so that you can invite that high frequency into your body because it's always there. It is, never, it is never far away. You're not cut off from it. That high frequency is there, but if you close down, you're not able to perceive it. So opening up by breathing, starting by breathing, that is one of the most important things in this reality, to breathe mm. every single time. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, so it's everything. Let's see, uh, Terrell, said uh some children had an easier childhood some children have a harder childhood gordana's right i had a rough childhood i was bullied throughout my childhood physically and emotionally i was also abused um by my daycare teacher let's see let's see more um it didn't stop me from spiritually growing it's tough but i just endure the pain and Terrell, thanks for sharing that, brother. And some, I, I completely relate to it. I think one of the things, I did this podcast, one of the top podcast episodes I've done, I mean, our episodes are one of the top 10. And another episode I had was with Dr. Jenna Scare. And we talked about pain, um, the beauty of pain or whatever it's titled, but pain um, is the indication of where we get to heal more. Usually people mm -hmm. are afraid of pain, so we turn, but pain is actually our power. And this is one of the things of the word magic I've been working with is pain is our power, our trauma is our treasure. And we can release the pain if we're willing to go back. And this is what our course is. And everyone yeah. watching and listening, Gordon and I will be coming out with a course here very within shortly in time, I don't know, a month mm -hmm. or so, um, a yeah. month and a half, two months. But is going back and healing those moments of pain in the past. So it's no longer, we're no longer anchored to that. And when I gave a TED talk and everyone listening, you can find my TED talk online is breaking the cycle of child abuse. It's about healing. It's about breaking the cycle, go back and face the pain, speak the pain, just <laughs> whatever you have to do to get that pain out and cry and emote and share those specific details of what happened, no longer stuff anything in so that we can finally come to that place and say, mm. I can release the pain. I can take the mask off when I so choose. And um, mm. this is what it means to come back into the now moment is not being tethered and not letting those define our now moment, but understanding that we chose those in those now moments, even in, as a mm. child, so that we could come to this now moment and share with the world mm. whatever you've gone through. And you, you might have a beautiful childhood and your gift is to bless those who didn't. One of my mentors mm -hmm. grew up in the most <laughs> wonderful home in the world. It's truly an amazing man. And, and, and I feel so much love from him. Thank God he didn't have trauma. He's actually a balanced you know, person. I mean, we all can share our gifts. Yes. There's not a, yeah. well, you went through that. And so I can't relate to you. It's that, no, we can all relate mm -hmm. to each other. And we all have our gifts and our experiences to share with one another so that we can, this is what rising in consciousness means. This is what ascension is, is that we all come, mm -hmm. a rising tide lifts all ships. So that when I heal, you can heal, mm -hmm. when you heal, mm -hmm. I can heal. And yeah. mm -hmm. We're all waking up to this right now in a powerful way. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, the thing when you have had a rough childhood, 
is that pain becomes your normal state of being, which means it's a habitual way of being. Well, pain is a portal for victimhood to become your permanent mask. I know this uh, because I was in emotional pain my entire childhood, which meant that every time I could dodge that pain, I thought that was happiness. Every time I could dodge the fear, wow, I dodged it, so I was happy. That's not happiness, that's survival, and that's a totally different frequency. Happiness is actively seeking joy for yourself. And that means that you have to know who you are in order to seek the joy that you need. But if you're constantly in pain or fear or victimhood, you will always be in a too low frequency to know who you are. You will be in ego mind all the time, which by the way, was a really illuminating thing for me to realize that being in victimhood is actually to have a very active ego. Most people see that when you are in ego mode, you are trying to dominate others or control others. Well, even if you are in victim mode, that is the ego because ego is all about separation and being a victim is a frequency which will separate you from everyone else because no one sees you. That's the victimhood in it. So you can become addicted to the pain emotional or physical pain you can become addicted to it and you don't realize it you're just living in it and the minute you start looking for joy you get punished because that's not your normal state of being your body craves the hormones and and all the cocktail hormonal cocktail which will give you pain and if you start looking for joy then you will be punished and you have to get back to that state of being. So it's almost like you need to work a lot in order to get rid of that ego and that habitual way of exploring reality. So just understanding that you are not the pain, you are not your past, you're not nothing of all of this. You're the one observing it, exploring it, using it as tools to to find your way in this physical reality. So beautiful. It's beautiful. (laughs) Well, as we um, come come to the end of the hour, a couple things I want everyone to know. And first, everyone, please go buy Gordana's book. It is it is a it's a true gift. It's treasure. I and before we get off, oh, seventeen people. We got seventeen people watching. My number is seventeen. Could you pull seventeen in your book and find that one? Yes, yes, yes. I will. And while Gardana is um, pulling that up, we will be going live again next Sunday at this exact same time. Um, we're going to be doing this for the next few weeks, um, maybe longer than that. But we are launching a course, something to help you be free in this now moment, in every now moment. And I'm so excited about this. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make sure people knew about that new to buy your book and yeah thanks for pulling 17 here yes and this is the book by the way hashtag know the truth why knowing who you are changes everything and here's the truth thought number 17 it's called secret knowledge and it's when your pursuit of wisdom is sincere and persistent what you need to know again we'll start again when your pursuit of wisdom is sincere and persistent what you need cannot be hidden from you it can never be hidden from you. It's about you seeking your own truth all the time, realizing that the truth can actually never be something that feels like it is harming you. The truth is always that you are, you cannot be hurt by anything in this physical reality. That is who you truly are. And then you are choosing whatever it is you want to explore in this reality from that state of being finding back to that state of being where you are indestructible and you can see how other people, you can see other people's struggle. You can see their egos and you do not react to it. You stay in that stillness. That is what compassion actually looks like. When you do not allow yourself to react, you stay in the stillness with understanding. That is who you are. So that knowledge can never be hidden from you. And let me read number 18 because it's a part of number 17. 
You can never turn your back on truth. It is everywhere silently waiting for you to find it. So every time you want to find it, breathe in and out a couple of times and that truth will come, you will come closer to the truth of who you are. Just breathing in and out will lead you to that truth because it's always there. It is not going anywhere. It just waits silently and patiently for you. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thank you. Thank for you. Yes. yes. Thank you, everyone. This is this is fun, and I hope I I see um, we got is it Zoe? We have Terrell, Suresh, um, James. Mm. We have some really beautiful comments there, and just I honor everyone for watching and listening, and thank you so much for joining us in this journey. Happy happy sunday but also happy day to be alive come back come back into your into your body take time to breathe what i talked about earlier our hands as receivers or antennas you can close your channel by putting your hands on yourself you can put your hands on your heart to create the loop inside yourself to you can also put your hands out and receive what is coming in, but you are fully in control. You're fully in power to experience whatever you want in this now moment. And so in this now moment, we bless you, we honor you, and we can't wait to talk to you next week at the same time. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.